Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi, and today we are playing Lucky 101, or the 101 Dalmatians Lucky deck. Why? Well, because Lucky has two very cool abilities. The first one is look at the top three cards of your deck, pick up all the two cost or less characters, put them into your hand. Second one is when you have a bunch of characters in play, you can give them all plus one lore and typically end the game on the spot with just the extra lore flowing. And well, if Lucky can quest for one and you have four more characters that can now quest for at least two, it's a big swing. So what Lucky does is it wants us to play a deck with a bunch of two or one costed characters and provides good benefits to them. We've also gotten the mommy, Perdita, who has a similar ability in that she can revive when she, both when she enters play or when she quests, revive one of your one or two drop, bring it back to the battlefield, which helps the flood, which helps with Lucky. So we have these two very powerful abilities that incentivize us to play these one and two drop characters. But there's another one. There's Stitch Rockstar, everyone's favorite floodborne alien uh, that... Well, we've seen the power of the first chapter, we're still seeing a bunch of play with the second and third chapters with Into the Inkborn, <laughs> into, the, into the Inklands and Rise of Floodborn, where Stitch just draws cards and allows you to flood the board without emptying your hand. So we have three powerful playoffs for playing a bunch of one drops and two drops. <clears throat> okay, so then let's fill up our curve with some one drop and two drop characters some cindy's pretty good but we're not going to be a song heavy deck so we'll skip on the cinderellas i'm gonna go with a full play set akita mostly because i want to play some shifting targets some of the best one and two drops right now are shifting targets for stronger characters lilo's a nice two quester uh, we're going to be somewhat aggressive since we're playing a bunch of one and two drops. So a full play set of Lilos. We'll play a full play set of Plutos. Uh, simply because Pluto can ramp us into these bigger threats. Note that Perdita and Stitch both cost six. So this isn't an empty my hand aggressive deck. It's really more play a bit of early game into mid game. Try to reach out for that Stitch and Perdita. And then just spam my hand, revive characters, keep on getting extra resources off of lucky so it's really a flood the board play a bunch of small stuff all around the big payoffs so again more more small stuff we'll get, we're going to be playing full play set of stitch shifting target for the big dog uh, so it's a nice inclusion then let's move on to the two drops we're going to ignore these little dalmatians puppy because well they're just not good there's better options, like Gramatala. Not the best for getting revived from Perdita because she's most of the time in your ink pile. But hey, she's two drop, she triggers Stitch, she gets picked up by Lucky. That's good enough for me. And here I see this. I think I'm going to go with someone jumps ahead. Because again, we want to bridge that gap. So we have our six drop big win conditions and then we have one and two drops so what do we do between three and four ink well, we want to skip those we want to use one jump ahead to just completely bypass those three and four inks go straight up simba awesome bodyguard lilo into simba still a strong combo and he's a nice two drop we're going to be playing some wendy's because burgers or just because she's a two quester with three three willpower Good enough for me. All right, that brings us to 44. What else do we have? Ah, oh, Captain Piglet. Fantastic inclusion. Uh, in particular, when you have many characters, he quests for three, which is awesome. Also, he's a small character, fits our description. He's aggressive. It's what we want to see. Now, speaking of the ramp, let's play a full playset of Mr. Mickey Mouse Detective which is going to help us reach that late game. Now we need... What do we need? We need some inkables. So 
I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> eight times four, 32. So we have over half of our deck as one and two drops, which I think is enough. I mean, with lucky, that means that we're hitting one and a half. We should be hitting at least one. We can pretty much count on one, and we're hoping for two. With the Miraculous Tree, it might happen from time to time. So I think that's enough. Uh, we're playing one, two, three, four uninkables. Five, six. Ooh. Might be playing a bit too many uninkables. <coughs> Maybe I should be cutting some Plutos here. Although these uninkables are actually ramp. So I don't care over as much. Lilos I do really like. Lucky, lucky and pretty to our core. So this L shaped of cards I do really like. Maybe we should cut some Plutos. I'm going to keep them in for now, and mostly because I've already recorded the games with this deck. Uh, but feel free to cut some Plutos for some Inkable One Drops. All right, let's look at more Inkables. Actually, if we're keeping the Pluto, Big Pluto would be a decent option, especially since we're ramping quite a bit. Uh, but I'm going to go, since, I've, since I'm playing the Keto, I'm going to go with Big Keto over here. And the reasoning be, behind Big Keto is that I'm planning on splashing a bunch of things on the board. And especially when you have a Piglet and a Lilo, just dropping a Keto and nullifying all the power on the board can be quite powerful in a pinch. Also protects your Perdita from combat, protects your Stitch if you want to quest for three. And just keep on using these abilities. Protects your Lucky, who's actually quite vulnerable at 2-3 stats line. So Kida helps us protect. We already, we're already playing the Shifting Target. So that's a nice option. And the last card is going to be... Let's play some Rapunzel's. Just to smooth out our draw. She's inkable. She can turn our cards into card draw in a pinch. So we have a lot of 3 willpower characters. It's relatively easy to get one or two points of damage on them. Try to find one of, one of our big payoffs in a lucky Perdita and Stitch. And I think that's a fairly, fairly good deck. It's basically the evolution of Stitch Turbo, where we used to play Stitch, try to dig for it, and then play a bunch of one drops and two drop, flood the board, and keep on drawing more cards, refilling your hand, which was a powerful strategy with the first chapter. Fell a bit out of favor with uh, Rise of the Floodborne, but it's still a powerful strategy. And now we have Lucky <coughs> and Perdita as nice payoffs. Piglet's also a very strong addition. So I'm curious to see the deck in action with some games coming right up. We're playing against Emerald Steel. Let's see what our opening hand has in store for us. A pair of Mickeys. Double Pluto Simba. Actually, way too many uninkables with this hand. Let's go Pluto in a Simba. We're going first. Yeah, Pluto in a Mickey or Pluto in a Simba seems like a good start. And we find Lucky. Alright. Huh? Gonna ink that stitch. Even though we have big stitch at the ready. Because, well, we don't have that many inkable choices. And I kind of like that piglet. I mean, he has a wooden sword. What else do you want? Cursed Merfolk for our opponent. Let's activate Pluto's ability. Ramp up. I guess we're going to have to ink our piglet here. Kind of want to keep the Simba for next turn. Turn to Mickey. Ramping it up. That's a good Pluto. Landing a turn to Mickey detective. Classic, but very effective. Ursula looking at our songless hand. Being disappointed. <clears throat> As the 
Curse Merfolk, come in and quest. All right. Well, we're going to take out the Curse Merfolk. Now, at that point, I don't overly care for that Lilo. So Lilo's going to go away. I'm in a terrible spot where I want to ink the Simba and I want to play the Simba. But I'm going to go with the ink plan so I can land Lucky. And, I mean, Ursula's challenges for once. Let's, let's quest. Send the dog on a quest. So, Lucky. Reveal the top three cards. You put each character costing two or less into your hand. That's a nice draw type ability. As the opponent plays the dreadful Ursula of evil, doom, terribleness. When she's played against us, obviously. Well, now we'll activate Lucky. It's an activated ability. We find Rapunzel, Kida, and a Stitch. So we do have one hit with Stitch. And Mr. Stitch is going to allow us with Pluto to land Big Stitch. Then Mickey doesn't have much to do, so we're going to send it on a quest. Well, Mickey drew us a card. That's a good start. It all depends on what this Deceiver of All is going to sing. When you have to lead, let Ursula, Deceiver of All, sing a song, you kind of go, yeah, come on. No song in hand, no song in hand. Well, it's going to be double strength for Raging Fire, taking out our big stitch. Oh, well. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Pluto bites the dust. All right, well, lucky. Take it for another spin. Find another Rapunzel, Perdita, and Gramatala. Should be hitting more hits. I don't take what we hit. Don't really need that Gramatala. One another stitch, since apparently our opponent's quite afraid of it. Quest with mouse. Pass the turn back again. Ooh. Tiberius Rourke. And sudden chill. Opponent is going to discard our hand. Which is very unfortunate. But that means that Lucky is going to get a live. So Rourke, whenever you play this, opposing character gains reckless. Alright, so our Big Stitch is reckless, and whenever we banish one of their characters, we lose one lore. All right. Well, Lucky's still alive, so we're going to run it again. This time we find we find a hit again. One hit per turn. Honestly, it's not that bad, especially with Big Stitch, because we get to draw a card. Perdita, not exactly what we wanted. <clears throat> Looking at our discard, we do have a juicy little Simba over there. So we're going to ink Wendy to land Perdita. Go Perdita! Bring back a Simba. Simba without bodyguard. Stitch triggers. We'll draw a card off of Perdita. Finding another Perdita. So that's Perdita amazing. Pretty amazing. Nah, it doesn't quite work. And Stitch can't quest. Has to challenge and will have to challenge the Prince. Due to his bodyguarding nature. As we'll pass the turn back to our opponent. Now we have pretty solid board. As long as the opponent doesn't find a grab your sword. The opponent finds an Ursula.
And with Lucky's ability, we're now going to be able to quest for a ton next turn. And we have a bodyguard at the ready to protect Lucky. Protect it somewhat, I mean. Poon can still run some characters into Simba and then take out Lucky. But that does leave us in a good spot. Opponent decides to keep the Deceiver of All on the battlefield. I mean, at this point, it's really how do we lose this game? We can quest with Lucky and then go 3, 4, 5. Well, yeah, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 4, 12. We quest the 15. Drop Akita. That seems devastating enough. All right. Puppy Love. Quest, quest. Oh, and Perdita triggers. Let's bring back our Simba bodyguard. <laughs> uh, I should have brought it unexerted. Draw a card off of Stitch. That's actually a wonderful wombo combo. But for now, we're just going to drop Akita, nullify everything on the board. I forgot that Perdita triggered whenever she quested. Oh, nice mama pup, just bringing back her 101 Dalmatians. And that's how you do it. Swarm the board, and even the Deceiver of All just couldn't find enough gas to stop us in our tracks. We're playing against Steel Amethyst. Going first, we find ourselves with Lila, Wendy, a Gramatala. Second Wendy, and a pair of Kitas. A pair of Kitas is too many Kitas. I'll send away a Wendy Darling. The rest seems appropriate. So we shall keep. So find Piglet and Mickey. For now, let's send off Wendy. I'll drop the Lilo. Just a classic. E2 Quester, 1 1. Applying pressure. Getting steeled out by a mini Robin or Captain Hook. Ooh, that one's not looking too great. That's where I wish that the Lilos were inkables. Drop a Gramatala and move on to plan B, which is ramping up, comboing up, and seeing what we can do once we reach these critical numbers of ink. Opponent goes to quest with the captain. And Mim Snake does short work of it. As we find a Perdita. I'm, I'm happy to see a Perdita here. As we get a Mickey our way. Up to four. <coughs> Gravital will get a free quest. Actually, if anything, I'd be happy if the opponent takes out Grandma. Let's keep the Lilo for now. I've been a little too cautious with my questing in the past, and maybe that's one of these occasions. Trying to bait the opponent to challenging Gramatala is probably not going to work. But if Lilo's exerted, there's really no reason for the opponent to challenge Grama. Opponent goes snake to snake. So we find. A Rapunzel. I have nothing to challenge. Let's ink Miss Rapunzel. Land an extra Lilo. Let's say we quest with everything. Uh, Snake's going to challenge Mickey. Robin's going to take out Lilo. Then. Then you can still land Perdita, bring back a Lilo. We gotta make our move to win someday. 
and we'll keep Rapunzel as an extra inkable. I mean, we got an ink use of that Perdita. One six, she's pretty pretty tough. Point lands Robin, and Lilo bites the dust. Ooh, crab goes to the ink. And goodbye, Mickey. That's all right. My question is, do we want to revive Lilo or do we want to sacrifice our Grand Metal and bring her back with Perdita? As you find a Kida. Not sure why the opponent, oops, forgot to ink maybe. Yeah, I'm tempted to go the Gramatala route. But we know the opponent has another snake. So I'll sack her in a robin. Oh, whoops. Yeah, of course, Gramatala is going to the ink, so we can't revive her. Should have thought about that. I'll bring another Lilo. And I guess we, we, no, actually I'll just pass. So next turn I want to swing Perdita and get a triple heal off of Rapunzel. All right, opponent deals two damage to Alilo. And two damage to Alilo, in case you missed it in the last five seconds. Happened twice. Oof. Then opponent sayings, and then along came Zeus, which is even better for us. I think we played a Rapunzel here. <clears throat> Just a full three point heal, draw three. Set up a nice, juicy stitch for next turn. I kind of want the extra card next turn off a of stitch. That again, I already have two. Does the extra third card really help that much? Well, opponent can quest for three, which isn't that oppressive. If the opponent casts a whole new world, we're still fine. We're way ahead on ink. If the opponent quests, let's play it safe. Let's play for the card advantage for the Perdita stitch combo. Opponent's also going for the card advantage with a Merlin bunny. Smee goes to the ink, and whatever opponent has left is going to go questing. Oh, Robin stays at the ready. All right, well, be my guest. It's time for Stitch to come home. Perdita triggers. Bringing back below number one. And we'll draw the card. Play a small Stitch. Draw a card. Play the Lilo. Draw a card. Why don't we just keep things going? Kida, join the party. More stitching. All right, and Rapunzel can quest. We have enough juicy combat targets for our opponent that they shouldn't be challenging our Rapunzel. Unless there's a grab your sword. The bane of this deck. Opponent grabbing swords and pointing them at dogs. I mean, who does that? It's just, it's cruel. I guess Cruella would do it, although Cruella's... Not really a sword type. I don't know. Maybe some kind of floodborne Cruella that wields multiple swords and is like frenzied. <laughs> Just going after the 101 Dalmatians. Opponent takes out Perdita. Wise choice. And Mim Fox is going to bounce back to Bunny. Take out Lilo, I imagine. By this point, we've shifted into a stitch combo deck. Just 
which is fine by me. Madam Mims trying to save their characters. Robin, Robin. All right, if that's how you want to play it. Kind of want to take three damage off of Stitch and heal it with Rapunzel. <clears throat> Well, maybe I should have sent Rapunzel. That would have made more sense. Since Stitch quests for more. Ooh, and we find Akita. Akita's nice, just nullified board. We can also land a Wendy Darling. No, not this turn. All right, we're ahead on more. I find that Kida would be quite effective. So the opponent doesn't have a nice grab your sword at the ready. I'll just hard cast the Kida. Your Mim Fox is on the battlefield. What more can you do? 13. Threatening lethal. Passing the turn back. Although Mad Mim Fox still has one power, she can still poke at something. Opponent shifts Robin. Still at zero power. Opponent rereading key to double check. But I believe it to be accurate. The goat's not the greatest right now. So the opponent makes the game a bit more reasonable, questing to 12, 13. Passes the turn. In the face of Kida. And we take the win. Stitch combo style. We're playing against Emerald Amber. With our Lucky Perdita deck. Find Pluto Kida. Piglet. Mickey Double Simba Kida. It's actually pretty decent. We have a nice one, two, maybe two, three ramping into Kida. Don't really like the Pluto in that hand. Rest is fine. So move on to turn one. Don't really need the double Simba. So we're going to ink it. Line turn one key to as we pass the turn. Also setting up for the protector of Atlantis. Coming in on turn and three. Which is not really the best because she shuts herself down from taking an opponent down. I find a Gramatala, but the opponent going Cursed Murfolk means that the opponent is going to be playing quite aggressive questing wise, not so much in terms of lore. So I'll we'll set up a turn two piglet. Try to match our opponent's aggressive nature with an aggressive start of our own. Piglet, Poo Pyron Captain. Ah, the opponent has the bodyguard. Now on three. We can land a Mickey. Or we can land our Simba. I think I prefer landing Simba here. Not sure we need Kida anymore. For now, let's make way and get rid of Gramatella. Play Simba as a bodyguard, which triggers Piglet and a quest for four. Five to two. Battle of the Lion Kings. Opponent is going pretty hard on those cursed merfolks. Says I've got Simba number two. An opponent really just want to play the defensive game at this point. All right, the Kida comes on. So we're most likely going to be questing with the gang. We need to ink. 
Can Inkita land a Mickey? Go to five, set up a stitch next turn. Which I think is what we want to do here. Can also land another Akita if we want to apply a bit more inking pressure. Let's keep her in hand for now. Although two, three, four, five. I think we're gonna start getting into combats next turn. So I'm gonna hold that Kita to ensure we can play our stitch next turn. This is an intense, I'm completely ignoring what you're doing. So am I type of combat. It's combat with no combat, just waiting for the combats to combat. Another Cursed Merfolk. Another two quester. Opponent, opponent is turning up the heat. And ignoring completely what we're doing. We find a Pluto. Not what we're looking for. So we'll be obviously playing our Stitch. Now opponent can quest for 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. So we're on the back foot here. We need to take out two Simbas. And then we'll lose. And then we'll lose. But we have to, otherwise we really lose on the spot. It really is a shame though. A pair of two questers. Gonna have to run our piglet into a Simba. It really is a shame. Pride lands to seal the deal. Opponent will go to 19. There's no way we can hit the Pride lands and get rid of all of our opponent's characters. So I'll do what we can, quest 15. So we find a Kida. Kida is not good enough. Let's draw a card off of Stitch. We can find Lucky. Not lucky enough this game. Let's quest, neutralize the board, and call it a game. As the Pride lands, take the win. Ah, uh, if the opponent couldn't quest for just that much, then we would have been on the pressure. We would have been the ones applying the pressure. But then again, we got the first turn, and the opponent just outquested us, so can't really complain there. We're playing against Emerald Steel. With our 101 Dalmatians deck. And so much more, I guess. So we find Perdita Stitch. Some nice little ramp to go with it. I like it. Let's keep that. Turn to Wendy, turn three. You want to jump ahead, Mickey. Then we can start dropping stitches. Our opponent's playing a hard aggro deck. Oh, I mean, turn to Simba. That's more appropriate. You have a bodyguard for that cursed merfolk. No, it's a Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee's really good at taking out Simbas. But Wendy's not looking great right now. So I think I'm going to opt with the let's sacrifice the early game set up a nice late game hard cast one jump ahead I really want to go Mickey Mickey goes to four need to ink Simba so I think I need to sacrifice Perdita now 
Actually, I'm better off discarding the Simba because I can pick it back up with Perdita. Now let's go with that. Discard a Simba. We'll, we'll ink one of the stitches. Simba's going to be a nice little target for Perdita later on. Let the storm rage on. I mean, Smee Combat would have done just as good. I'm actually kind of happy to see the opponent spending three ink on that card. Might as well land the mouse. Can safely ink Arkita. Go to five. Play a slightly slower turn here, which our opponent gave us the time to do. Ooh, Prince John. Wasn't that really not nice? I think we're mostly set up by now. As long as we get to land our rock star. Ah, we have to ink a stitch. That is unfortunate, but it will land one. And we'll take out Mr. Smee. All right, and now we have Pluto as a buffer. I really don't mind discarding that Pluto, although playing it's still good. I mean, we'll draw a card off of Stitch. So that's perfectly acceptable. We're still trying to pick up a song in our hand, but we've got none of those. Let's go back to highlighting our rock star. Sudden chill. Goodbye, Pluto. I never really cared. Actually, I think we have the new rock star here. If I'm going to highlight it, might as well highlight the fancy new art. The promo. This opponent deals a bit of damage, but it doesn't matter because we have a Perdita. Perdita triggers. Let's bring back our Simba at the ready so we can trigger a stitch. Find a piglet. Take out Prince John. And kind of want to keep Piglet, so we'll pass the turn. Seeing nice and pretty with Perdita, Simba, and Stitch. All it needs a lucky, and then we're all fully set. I think we're in good shape now, even though score is essentially 7 0. Opponent plays the Fearless Robin. I say fearless, but it should fear our, our puppy, her cat, and whatever that is. Alien, puppy. I guess he's called new dog as the one drop. So we're going to go with weird puppy. Ooh, and we find a lucky. I like that. So let's start by singing one jump ahead. Symbol likes singing anyways. We can go piglet. Draw off a stitch. I will ink Kita for a rainy day. Play our lucky. And then we get a quest. Quest and have some fun. Because Perdita will bring back a Leela, which will draw us a card. And we need to start questing. Combos are real. And our board state is impressive. Okay. Playing with your wallet, I see. Got a tragic hero coming down. At some point, we do need to win the game. Opponent takes out our Alilo, so our opponent is afraid of our extensive board state. But we do have access to a Lucky, which will give all our characters plus one Lord this turn. Let's drop our Alilo. Pick up a card, pick up a card off of Simba. Thank you, Stitch. More bodyguards, infinite bodyguards combo. We'll keep on playing them as long as we keep on drawing them. And, well, now it's time to quest with Lucky. Give everything plus one. Actually, opponent can't, yeah, opponent can't win. 
plus seven goes to 18. I can't see our opponent drawing into winning condition. So I'll just play another Simba. Can never have enough Simbas. I don't quest for four off of Piglet. All right, opponent. What have you got? I want the opponent to go straight to combat. You know you're in a good, good state. Opponent would need like double grab your sword to start. Yeah, double grab your sword would probably take us down. Then we try to repick up the pieces with Perdita's. Opponent can quest the sixteen. 16 is not enough as lucky is plus one across the board and then we'll, we'll end it with captain piglet piglet for four and that's how we win playing mirror match sapphire ember Let's see what our opponents got as we go first and open up with a pluto Fair Wendy's, Kita Stitch Rapunzel. This doesn't feel like a Lilo hand. Also send away Kida, and I'll keep the rest for ink ability. But an early Pluto is pretty nice. Let me find one jump ahead. So that's pretty good. Get a turn two Mickey. Then turn three, we get to sing one jump ahead off of Pluto, off of Mickey. Sorry, Pluto, you're just a little too young to sing. Also, dogs can't sing. Well, two ink and higher dogs can sing. So I guess that's not entirely through. Opponent has a queen. Now we're gonna do it anyways. Let's get that turn to Mickey on the, on the road. Sacrificing Pluto. Cost of doing business. I'm not sure if that was worth playing one card. That's a problem with the friendly pooch. Ooh, opponent plays Huey. Here we have a nice Rapunzel play though. I do need some extra cards. So I think that stitch. Go for Rapunzel. Draw some cards. Find another Mickey and a Lucky. That's a Lucky pickup. Too easy. Shouldn't be making jokes that are too easy. I probably shouldn't. But I will anyways. Opponent shifts up for a queen. And here we quest and the queen takes out her Mickey, leaving a Rapunzel alive and ready to take out the queen, which we most certainly will do. <coughs> queen is just too damaging. And now what do we do? Well, I have a bunch of uninkables and only one card can be inked, so we're gonna play it. Wendy, getting us to five. Our discard, our options are not too great. So let's go after using all our ink. Lucky Lilo. After all that, Huey should go after Rapunzel now. I know Huey, Louie, and Dewey have some kind of synchronization. Yeah, whenever you quest, if you have Dewey and Louie, you may draw three cards. The opponent has two out of the three. Honestly, they're not great individually. Find another one jump ahead. Now, this turn is very tempting to go Mickey one jump ahead. I think we'll activate Lucky's ability. 
see what we can find. Start digging. We find a small stitch, a Lilo, then a Perdita. That's two cards in hand. We will pick those up quite gladly. Ink a stitch. Got a quest with these two since we don't really have anything better to do. We could sing one jump ahead, but what's the point? Let's just go wide. Opponent doesn't have any area of effect style board wipes. So going wide seems to be a good play here. One of the downsides of Amber Amethyst. You don't have an answer for mass characters. And your opponent has it. Louie, Huey, and Dewey. Here comes the massive card draw. Opponent takes out Lucky. As they should. Lucky was a very threatening threat. As threats should be. Gumbo Pot. Interesting. And you find a Gramatala. At this point, we just go for game. Just go and just start questing with everything. I can play Perdita. Bringing Pluto. Gramatala. Just try to end the game fast. And also let our opponent have the fun of Huey Dewey Louie drawing insane amount of cards off of their ability. Ooh, and Grand Bobby. That's actually troublesome. Word to highlight. Because I really enjoy my Grand Bobby decks. Whenever you remove one or more damage, you gain two lore. So that's going to be four lore off of that gumbo pot. More cards off of Yui. Boom. Opponent can request for three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring them to 14. And if the opponent can heal quite a bit, we could be in trouble here. Fortunately, I don't have anything that hits. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, I would have to send Mickey, Gramatala, and Rapunzel to take out Louie. I can take out Huey. Yeah, just challenge Huey. Send in a Mickey, and yeah, we have Lilos, so we're fine. Take out Lu we'll take out Huey. <clears throat> Can cast everything we have. Can't take out another character, so that'll be it. For Dita triggers, bring back a Lilo. Quest of the crew. Threaten lethal for next turn, but the opponent, if they can if the opponent has an extra source of healing, now two, four, six, seven. So now that's 13 with three heals. That's 19, so it's not quite enough. Second Grand Pappy will do it though. That's four, eight. But these guys, one of those need to challenge. 10, 13, ooh, no, opponent's still short. If I'm counting right. I should advertise the video as watch this video till the end if you want to see me do math. Well, this Grand Poppy deck is funny. When you can get two poppies, that's when stuff gets real. Yeah, so let it go. Point sees that they can't win it on the spot. It can come close. Gumbo pot. Boom. 
8, just like that. The opponent could have quested to 19. Instead, opponent is forced to go to combat, and our pair of Plutos help us take the win. 22, essentially 19. Just close by every way you can calculate it. That was a great game. It's time for the pose game analysis. Overall, the deck felt pretty strong. It's kind of the evolution of Stitch Turbo, which was already a strong deck. And now that we have three nice payoffs with Lucky, Perdita, and Stitch, the deck feels solid. Uh, the main weakness of the deck, I'd say, is the fact that we don't have anything to remove opposing character. We really have to be on the questing offensive. If the opponent's playing a high uh, questing strategy and drops big bodyguard or even like a Simba, it's hard for us to get past it. I mean, it's 2 1 0, 2 1 2, 2 power. So our first line doesn't hit for more than two. We, we have to go up to Kida and Stitch. We really don't want to be hitting with those. So maybe I'd substitute uh, some of the Plutos and maybe maybe a couple of the Kidas. Maybe we can thin out that Kida line for more aggressive strat line, uh, stats line, so that we have the option of removing a Simba, for example. And the gameplay still plays the same. We just have a bit more variations. Instead of always being on the questing side, this deck's not that fast. It really just goes wide and wide and gets a lot of cards and it's really good at doing that. Uh, so we probably should be going a little bit more flexible with our options. Tin out a couple of Kitas, tin out a couple of Plutos, a couple of Wendy's, and flip those for three powered characters just to give us that option. Then based on the matchup, we can ink what we, we don't want. The ramping felt pretty good. And maybe we're playing a few too many one jumps ahead, but I love the Mickey's. Just Pluto into Mickey is a line that I do really like. If you if you're going well, if you're going first and the opponent doesn't play a one drop, it's very powerful. Even if the opponent takes out a Pluto, we can revive it later with a Perdita. It's not the end of the world, especially if we can ramp with the with the Mickey Mouse quickly. So overall, I'd recommend the list. I love this style of combo-ish type of deck, especially with multiple payoffs. It's not just around that one card, but you're going to be drawing one of your payoff cards. And if they don't get removed, then the deck can do some pretty ridiculous stuff. And that's fun to me. If it's fun to you, feel free to give it a try. I'd encourage it. Love this type of deck. And it's a one-on-one -on -one Dalmatian based turbo deck, although we're only really playing two Dalmatians. So maybe I should have called it Turbo 2.0. Well, I hope that you've had a great time, that you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button once or three times, any odd number of times so it stays up. Leave a comment below telling me if you like this style of Stitch Turbo deck. And have a great day. I'll see you next time.